Hey, it's James here. Now, if you're looking for the ultimate microphone arm for your studio setup, stay tuned because we're going to be talking today about the Yellow Technica. Hey, I'm James, and if you're new to this channel, I like to talk about radio and podcasting, and frequently I'm doing equipment reviews like the one today, so remember to hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you're always updated when new content is delivered to the channel. Now, today, I quite often get asked in the comments, which microphone arm do you use? And I'm very lucky because at home, and we have a couple here at the office as well, I use this arm, which is the Yellow Tech arm uh, and it's part of the product series called Mika. Now this actually forms one part of a whole kind of range of studio fixing gear. So they have monitor stands, they have stands for your scripts, they have arms where you can mount cameras, and this is um, available in black or silver. As you can see, one of the reasons that it's so popular is it just looks really sleek. You know, the cable's built into the arm um, and it has a kind of nice matte black finish. And of course, it's great quality. I've been using them for the past couple of years. A lot of people are thinking, well, can I go get one of these? Um, one of word of warning is these are pretty expensive. So I think this one retails around 300 pounds, about 300 US dollars. Not on top of that, you don't just get the arm, you then have to go and purchase somehow some way to fix it. So in this example, I've got the table clamp, which obviously just clamps onto the table, which works really, really well. But you can also buy various different attachment options. So you can buy one that you actually drill through the table. You can buy one which mounts flush with the surface of the table. So not only do you need to go out and buy the arm, but you also need to go and buy the way to mount it. So once we've got it mounted, brilliant. We're ready to go, right? We're ready to connect our microphone. Well, actually, no because despite the fact that you're spending 300 pounds on a microphone arm, you don't get a connector on the end, which I couldn't believe when I got these. We ordered three of them a while ago and they all came and obviously just imagine the cable just with bare ends on it. You need an XLR in order to connect your microphone. I don't understand why they don't provide one of these because what other device, what else are you gonna connect apart from an XLR microphone? So why don't they just put an XLR cable on the end of it, or an XLR connector? I don't know. Someone asked me, how do you fit this on? Now, I personally haven't done any soldering since I was in school, so I didn't really want to give it a go. What I did do, I went to kind of a couple of local guitar repair shops, so like the kind of places where they fix musical instruments. They're always going to have someone who has a little workshop out back who knows how to solder plugs on. Um, and so I just actually bought these plugs. These are Nutric jacks, which is like the best quality uh, XLR connectors you can get. So I bought uh, both ends for this, and obviously we bought them for the other ones, and we, we paid to have these soldered on for us. But something to bear in mind if you're thinking about buying one of these microphone arms, one of the things I like about them is they kind of swivel really, really freely. Um, it's nicely designed. As I mentioned, it's kind of designed as part of a wider studio system. The cable's built in, meaning you don't have kind of like loose cables everywhere. And you know, the, the tension on them is pretty good. If you've got a heavy microphone, perhaps you have a big condenser microphone such as the Neumann U87. These will deal with it absolutely no problem at all. Whereas a lot of the cheaper microphone arms you get uh, won't cope with the weight. What else do I like about this? Well. Pretty much that's it. I think it's really one of these things you kind of buy for vanity reasons. You will see these used in pretty much every commercial radio studio and lots of uh, commercial podcasting studios as well. They have kind of become the industry standard, but as a result, you do pay a price. Now, do I think it's worth it? Well, I'll let you be the judge of that. The one thing I would say is think about what microphone you're mounting on the end. If your, mic if your microphone is <laughs> worth less than the arm itself, then I would say probably go for a cheaper arm, um, a Rode PSA-1, which is like $80, I think, um, or even one of the KLM arms will be a, a more budget-friendly option than uh, the Yellow Tech. Do they look as nice? I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. Maybe you're thinking about going and buying one of these and investing in the Rolls-Royce of microphone arms. Tell me what you think and tell me uh, if you're gonna go and buy one. Comment below, let me know. And do you think it's worth the money? What makes the difference between a successful radio station and a failed project? Well, after working with tens of thousands of broadcasters over the past 15 years and helping lots of people start their own radio stations, I see the same mistakes being made time and time again. So what I've done is I've put together a guide called the five step radio startup checklist. 
which really covers everything from concepting your radio station to marketing it. And this guide, I believe, will make the difference between you having a successful venture with longevity and creating something that doesn't quite hit the mark. Go and grab your copy now for free at jamesm.com slash radio. Just enter your name and your email address and I'll send it over to you straight away. You're going to find it really useful. There's tons of information there which will help you with concepting and launching your brand and bringing it to market.